Welcome, part nine. Um, yeah, after one week of break, uh, because I was a little busy on the weekend, uh, we continue our Enderwire build. Um, yeah, basically, let's see where we stopped, um, because I'm kind of, I kind of forgot where, where we left off. <laughs> I must admit. Um, but basically, today, my goal is to finish up the wiring. Um, so we'll have to add the relay to turn on, on and off the printer, as well as the back converters to power the Pi. Um, and I, like, when I, I, I designed that, I thought about what I want to power with that. <laughs> I kind of forgot, so we need to figure this out. Um, oh yeah, one for the relay, one powers the relay, and one powers the Pi. And then we also have this um, Raspberry Pi 4 that we kind of have to take apart, and this will be the brains of the entire, entire show. So, those come in. Um, we also still have to do, I think, like one or two... Uh, one or two plugs were left from the last time um, that we need to like finish up and besides <clears throat> that the wiring itself is done we did not yet wire the uh, motors um that's also something we can do today but as i say that i wonder where i put the cables <laughs> for, the, for the motors it's a bit chaotic but um let's see how we roll cool and i would say let's uh flip it over and continue where we left off. Oh, maybe it's better the other way. Yes. So that's where we left off. I also have to light a little different today, so we have a little bit more more illumination in this area here. Um, so yeah, so these are the cables we still have to do. Um, one will stay bare um, because we don't need it. It's a filament sensor we don't need at the moment. Um, that leaves us with the probe, the auxiliary pin, and the LED pin. So like those we still kind of need to uh, figure out what we need to do. I just discovered I do not see the chat. I didn't miss anything yet. Cool. Yeah, so these are the three we still have to wire. Um, then we also have to do the AC uh, inlet here. And we have to do the AC wiring. Um, then we have to do the power supply will end up here. And on this side, we will have the Pi, the buck converters, and the relay. So we do all the wiring for that today. Um, yeah, I guess let's start with those. And we need to figure out where what goes where. Um, so I guess we can start, let's just pick one. Let's just do the probe. The probe pin most likely will need to be the end stop pin for that. But we need to see where this connects back actually. Um, so let's just oh, flip it over again. And quickly inspect what we did. So, this one is the probe. Oh. There's a bit of focusing issues today. Yeah. So, the black and white one, that is the probe. So, the black is ground and the white is the probe. So, we kind of need to check with the BL touch manual. Uh, on the menu with wheel touch pin out um what the white one is supposed to be and then here we have the red brown and yellow and yellow is supposed to be the a2 but i'm also not uh, i see that here like a bit concerned because we checked the the pin out in the in diagram right but here i do read 24 volts which goes on the red of the wheel touch which should be five volts um, so we also should quickly check the wiring of this, uh, whether it's actually wired to 24 or to 12 volts, because that would be a bummer if we wire that to, to 24. Let's quickly do that before we forget. Let's see. Oh, I also see. That the music wasn't playing. Here we go. Now we have some nice background music. <laughs> okay. Mm. Mm. 
So if we, let's see, so this one, if we put this here, yeah, that's 24 volts. This is the connection. Oh, that's a, that's a bummer. That's not what I want. Just double check. Yeah, it's 24. Hmm. Oh, shit. Well, good that we saw it <laughs> before we turn it off. Um, then let's quickly do some research. So. Uh, build touch. So the red wire is 5 volt. Um, yeah, so it's definitely wrong. But then we see that the white one, which is our pro pin, is indeed uh, the Z and stuff. And then the yellow one is the signal, which we need to have on the servo pin. Um, okay, let's see where... Ah, that's a shame. So this is definitely the wrong board. Because I basically this pin that reads 5 volt here is 24 on my label, and we also confirmed that this is 5 volt. Um, that kind of means we kind of need to recheck those. Uh, like for this, is, I'm not really concerned. Uh, those we need to recheck. Um, and then basically, we can just use the multimeter to see if they're just swapped, maybe. So basically, we have this 5 volt pin here on the side behind the chat. So we need to figure out on our real hardware board, which one goes where. But, but I guess lesson learned. Um, <laughs> there are different versions of those of those boards, so don't trust a random schematic on the internet. So let's see. So I'm just gonna position. Okay, this is now on the five volt. See if you get any continuity anywhere. Oh, let me see. So, at the very least, it should be. Yeah, so you don't quite see it, but here is a 5 volt pin, a bit hidden. There's a 5 volt pin which goes to the front and this has continuity with the side. Um, so this means that this board only has 24 volts on those pins because like none of these three here have any continuity with uh, 5 volt. Oh. With what do they have? Okay, I have no clue where that was <laughs> Um On the schematic, it's labeled as auxiliary port. So what I wonder is, because we basically have... What do we need for the wheel touch? We need one ground, one 5 volt, and a signal. And... Here we have A1. Which goes to the auxiliary and then we have AG. Huh. Okay, let's just 
I, I don't trust that anymore. So this one we know, the red one is 24 volts, which is... Yeah, that's 24. This one is ground, which should be... Yeah, this is ground. This one is a 2, which should go... Let's figure out where this goes. None of those? Huh. Where does it go? I'm sure I don't contact the pin there. Maybe let's um, remove those plugs quickly. Just to be sure that I actually touch the pins. Okay, so we are looking for this one here in the corner. Ah, see, I didn't touch the pin. It's instantly. Yeah, it's the lower one here, which is the filament sensor, which matches also the label that I now see after removing <laughs> the plug. So this is a filament sensor. Okay. Which is one of the cables we still have free. So, um, well, this renders this plug unusable because we have that one bad pin here. But then we have, this one is 24 again. Yeah, that's 24. Then we have a ground in the middle. Do we? Cables out of the way. <laughs> they don't want to be out of the way. So, let's check the one in the corner. I'm mean, also like I'm sure that I see what I'm doing. So, if I put this here, I don't seem to be able to get any contact on that. Same on that. Okay, this one is 24. Ah, this one's ground. Okay, I didn't touch it properly. But then where does this go? Yeah, like this one doesn't go anywhere. Okay, that's not good, but let's see. Then we have the aux here, which let's see where the aux goes. It should be the 
bottom most. Which it's not. Ah, it's a center pin, it's the aux. Um, this is auxiliary ground then, which is, should be this one. Yeah, okay, this is auxiliary ground, and then this one should be just ground. Oh, yes, yeah, ground. Okay. So here's my thinking. The probe port, um, which is this one here on top, this one, I think we can leave as is because we have the ground and the signal, right? The ground is in the middle. Let's double check that. Yeah, it's ground and then the signal uh, was one of them. Oh no, this one was the one that we couldn't find any pin for, right? Yeah. Okay, that's not good. Okay, but we can use this one here because here we have the ground in the middle. And then we have the probe on probe, I think, right? Or was it the, this was the filament sensor. So we can use this here. I'm not gonna plug it in fully. It's kind of pain to get out again, but this one goes here. So then that leaves us with one plug that we need to find a home for. And my thinking right now is to use this plug here because in the middle, We do have ground on the side. We have the A ground on this on the other side, which doesn't need to be ground, right? And then in the middle, we do have the AUX pin. Okay. So we can repurpose this plug here to have an extra five volt lane. Um, but I think we should write that down because I will forget that in no time. So that means that the um, black is on ground. No, no. Black is on ground. White, we said was on the probe pin. Let's just quadruple check that. Yeah, white is on. No, it's not on probe. It's on filament sensor. Then this plug, we need to swap the pins. So that means that we need to have, if we check the build touch out, brown is ground. That means ground needs to be on the outside. So brown is ground. Then in the center, we have aux. And aux, that's not a free pick. Can, let's say aux is five volts. And that's um, red. That leaves us with yellow. 
So red is in the center and it leaves us with yellow, which then will be on here, which is A ground. The yellow goes to A ground, which would result in the signal of the wheel touch. Okay, I have a very nice list. <laughs> okay, um, that means what we need to do on this side of the board is we need to swap the red and the brown pins, which I'm a bit afraid of, but we have to do it. So this brown is on the outside because brown goes on ground. Let's quadruple check. Ground is... Yes. Then we have red in the center, which will go to aux. Yes, and then we have yellow on the side, which will go to a ground. Yeah. Cool. Then we have a plan. And then on the other side of that harness, basically, we need to plug the out into 5 volt, and we need to plug the A ground into the probe signal. And the filament sensor is our uh, Z end stop. Because that is white. Yeah. Well, that's fun. <laughs> um, it's a good plan, but I am low key afraid. So let's plug in this one because we can leave it as is. So this goes in here. Man, did I did I not swap those like last stream? I I feel like that's something I did already. just carefully bent it up a bit and then Cables saw better days. not pretty um so double check the red goes to the center yeah it's exact it's exactly what i saw last stream i think so red goes to the center And brown goes to the outside. Ooh. 
And this isolation here is definitely damaged. I need to put something on there. After I fiddle this in here. should be in let me this is way bigger than, than what i see here <laughs> um cool yeah so there's a bit of like a damaged spot so i'm i mean it's not like something will short out there most likely but uh let's see what we can do we can fill it out again and put like some heat shrink on it but it's kind of like counterproductive um okay i'll i'll have to solve that later because i don't have any tape here right now but let's ignore it now so let's quadruple triple check this goes now here. Um, brown, red, yellow. Brown, red, yellow is what we see. Brown goes to ground. That's just, you know, just for the fun. That's one more time. So, brown goes to ground. Check. Center goes to A ground. No, that's an I. It goes to AUX. It goes to AUX. And then this one goes to A ground. It does. Okay. Then this is now correctly wired according to our very uh, sophisticated wiring diagram. Okay, so lesson learned here really check what you have as a board don't trust any schematics so then i still don't want to plug that in because it's kind of like a pain to unplug just like preliminary put it here and then there's one screw here we can just oh no ah, i had the right one Lost it for now. Cool. Oh, by the way, uh, while we're looking at this, I also um, painted those um, black. I just used um, I used some uh, black marker to just paint them black. Like they are blue by default. I just paint them black before you put them in, um, and then just put them in black. Most likely will scratch a bit over time if you like fiddle around with it too much, but like this looks way better um, than blue. Like this entire thing is black and then you have like this blue thingy so it's like horrible. <laughs> oh, oh, also, what I also did um, since last time is I replaced this very black part here. So this is a fresh part and I actually ended up like in from here basically, like from it's like like an L-shaped part, right? Like it goes around the corner here. And basically from where the top is of that L, and then like I think for like until more or less here, uh, this is 100% infill um, because this is exactly where it broke. You just have to look the broken part. Um, so this is the broken part. You see like just put this here so you see like this is here is broken and so basically um from where this part like the top of this part this prints like this vertical so from the top of this part until like somewhere here I, this is just 100 infill in the new one so that this doesn't break as easy um yeah and then i just mounted the chain so that's now all done. Cool. Then let's um, 
It's very close. Flipped it over again. Okay, then. Let's put this here. <laughs> um, our filament sensor. Do we still have that? Yes, this is the filament sensor cable. This will be our Z end stop, which goes here. Um, our aux cable, which is this one, will go to 5 volt. Our A ground cable, which we already put somewhere, <laughs> will be our signal for the probe. And then we are left with the probe cable, which will be unused uh, for now, and the LED for the front, which we also still need to figure out where to put. Okay, so I know, I think I remember that this one here is A ground. Um, Which now makes me think, let's double check that this A ground isn't used for something else, because that would really suck. Um, back to the top. <laughs> I'm not sure if this is difficult or whether I make it difficult. Um. Okay, let's see. So, um, we want to check. A, we need to check where A ground goes. But I also want to make sure, because I kind of remember that um, just really make sure that I'm in the right spot here. Oh shit. No. A ground is connected to the uh, thermal sensor. So we can't use A ground. For the signal of the probe. Which means we have to undo the red cable from here, from this plug. So a ground stays where it is. Um, so the red cable needs to go up to the one that was free, which was the probe, right? Um, now help me remember which one was the probe. Um, the first one actually. Huh. Okay, let's quickly check. So the center one is ground. Yeah, so where does this go? Those plugs are so annoying. Okay, let's see again. So, where does this go? This must be connected to something. Or was it the one that we couldn't get a connection on before, which would be really bad. 
Yeah, seems like. Because like the only chance we have now is basically to use the red um, five volt and grab it from this pin here. Because the only pin we're free. I mean, technically we also have here on the back, right, the four connections which are meant for the motor. But I would rather not use them, to be honest. Because we also didn't add them to the plug here. Yeah, the four free, the, the four pins are so free. So I'm not sure if we screwed up soldering that. Hmm. Yeah, it has continuity to the back, but it doesn't say much. Where should this go? Oh, I know why. There's the... Let me... I think the, the diode... Here's a diode, but I don't know how the... <laughs> how diodes work in detail because you don't get continuity over the diode. So if we get continuity here, we do, and we get it here, we do, then we are fine. So the diode blocks the, the magic beep somehow. I'm not sure if this means that the diode is installed in the wrong way. No, it's like neither neither direction works okay yeah that's the end of my knowledge i assume this is okay uh like if this makes problems we just bridge the two pins because i don't think we need that out there um okay cool mystery solved that means the pro pin actually is a pro pin which is Good. <laughs> okay, so that means that the red... Oh no, that's not a prop in the red cable. Goes to 5 volt, goes to pro. Um, filament sensor goes to Z end and A ground... No, wait, now I'm making a mess again. The yellow one. The yellow one uses A ground. Yeah, so the yellow one needs to go up. So red stays where it is and uses the out. And the yellow one uses a signal and that goes to probe. Yeah, so the, the yellow one is actually, <laughs> actually a probe. Um, so white filament sensor goes to that end. Uh, red aux goes to five volt. Yellow probe goes to signal. Um, let's quickly check then again that white goes to filament. I just might not get a thing there. Uh, let's unplug this again. This is like one of those things where I like always screw up if I don't triple check. Yes, demonstrated. And seemingly I did fuck up. Oh! The multimeter turned off. Okay, well then. <laughs> yeah, this is filament sensor, so this is fine. Then we said red is out, which is the center pin. This goes to the bottom one, yes, and then this one is here, which goes here. So we have to rewire the yellow. 
Now the interesting part is we need to find one extra housing. And I know there was one. We just have to find it. <laughs> and then the question is how many extra pins do we have? Because I'm also thinking, I mean, we have a bit of wire left here. Let's quickly pull out the yellow one. I just want to triple check that these are the ones we have. Because then uh, maybe if we get the yellow one undamaged out, I will consider uh, recrimping the brown and red one here because the cables are a bit damaged. I'm pretty sure these are the right crimps for that. Whew, okay, well, I didn't want to, to do this again, but here we are doing it again. Definitely not a fun plug to, to undo. And the other one doesn't budge. Technically I can break it off because we don't need this. The yellow one still doesn't budge. Here we go. Does it look okay? Yeah, I don't think we broke it and the crimp seems to be very strong. Okay, so this needs to go then in basically the same spot. In the same spot. Let's just split that up a bit more so this needs to go in the same exact spot and then this goes here perfect now Do we risk recrimping those? I mean, the yellow one looks fine. They are fine. It's just the brown one and the red one. If you recrimp them, we also have to remove them from the housing, which could like, this connector looks already quite. <laughs> I mean, we have five attempts to make two crimp, which seems like good odds. Hey, Joe. Um, yeah, let's do it. No risk, no fun. But, uh, oh no, crimping, no, that's not. <laughs> crimping here is, I, I think this is really no fun, like trying to crimp here with this cable length. Let's quickly check if we have a nice continuity. Uh, can we? No, we can't. Okay. Let's trust this works. <laughs> So, I think this is now the ultimate cabling. Uh, this should work. Let's close it and never look at it again because this is not nice. I'm optimistic. <laughs> And tighten the screw. 
Wow, okay. Um, this is some hacky cable job here. See, so then, according to our very beautiful wiring diagram, um, A ground, which is one of those two we can now leave. That means we need the filament sensor, which is this one, uh, goes to Z and stop. The AUX pin, which is this one, goes to 5 volt. And the probe pin, which is this one, goes to the signal of the avial touch. Um, this means most likely, let's we need to check the, the pin out of the board, but I think this plug here, this vertical. This one should have all the things we need, which would be really nice if we can just crimp one plug before the three and then have it done. And then the last one we need to do is the LED pin, which I think goes here. Let's see. Um, let's go and check the browser. So um, we also need to pay attention because we have a E3 V2, which is the right board, but we are now working on the V3, <laughs> which is the left board. Is this a V3? V3. Um, yes, so we have here the Z probe. And this gives us PC14 and PA1, which is PC14, I'm not sure, we need to check, and PA1, I'm also not sure. Um, but power should be 5 volts, I'm just not sure if that is the case. I wonder whether I still have the... Oh, yeah. So this is the original cable thingy that I used before. And we see here, this is the BL touch thing, right? This is, we can actually reuse the connector. Um, so what to make and the wire, um, but don't have an end of three. Should I buy an end of three frame or build an end of three from zero? Well, if you don't have the ender, I'm not sure if this is the, the best thing to do. Like, it's a fun project to build. Um, but if you buy an Ender 3, you spend so much money that you would be better off buying a switch wire kit, most likely. Um, because, like, this will run you, like, 300 euros just in parts. Let's say, like, you get the Ender 3 for... for and you need a 3 Pro, right? Um, like, for this conversion, I do, you need a 3 Pro. Let's say, like, it's not 100 and you're already at 400. Um, but then you're kind of close to, to like a switch market. I'm not quite sure how expensive they are, but um, you might be able, and if you get still some, I don't think switch wire is super like popular printer, unless for this conversion. Uh, but if you're spending 400, you're kind of getting close to like way more capable printers. So I, I mean, if it's for the fun, go for it. Um, if you get like a use and a three, like it doesn't really matter. Um, I would not buy a new Ender 3, uh, because like the, basically all you need in the end is a frame. Um, and the mainboard is the thing, like if you get an Ender, stock Ender 3, you will also have to buy a new mainboard. Um, yeah, I, I don't know, like it's... I'm not sure if I would do it if I would not have an Ender, let's put it like that. <laughs> um, okay, let me quickly see. So basically the yellow one... Let's actually just snip it off and keep that as a reference. Because these are exactly the pins we're looking at, right? Because we need to now figure out the red and yellow ones. So, and this went exactly here. Uh, here. <laughs> Into the plug that we're looking at. Uh, so we can just copy it over. Um, that means that the red one 
goes to the power pin, so this is 5 volt, and then the yellow one goes to PA1. Let's just grab a fresh connector. Oh yeah, this is here, close up of my very, very pretty wiring diagram. <laughs> Um, let's grab a connector, and then we also need some... JST pins. Is this what I'm looking at? It's wrong. Yeah, this is right. Cool. Um, then, let's just check the wiring length first. So we said we would need... Red is uh, red is out, which is this one, and yellow is probe, which is this one. So these basically now kind of have to run somewhat here. I'm just checking like lengthwise. I guess we can do something like like that i'm just snapping one for now so we don't mix them up so this one is aux aux is red so this goes i mean let's let's crimp them first let's crimp them first and then we, we figure out where the first one goes I did not miss crimping connectors. But then we also do will have to do a little bit of soldering today. Which I despise even more than soldering, uh, uh, crimping. So you will hear me complain a lot. Okay, that's the first one. Um, then this goes, again, we are looking at the AUX. AUX is red. Red is the second one from the bottom. Okay. And then the other one is the PRO pin, and this one just goes one above. Nifted roughly at the same length. And we're close to being done with crimping, I think. Unless we do something crazy and have to crimp the, the motor cables as well. Oop. That did not work. That did not work. Just did another squeeze. Good. And this goes the spot above. This goes. Just make sure they're kind of like in line. Yeah. Goes here. Then we can remove this one and plug in the new one. Perfect. Now we have a brand new plug on our board. And then later we will hide the entire mess. <laughs> it's super overexposed as well. Much better. So this will be all gone and the same here. Cool. Then uh, we have two tables left. We don't use the filament sensor now. So I'm most likely I'll just leave them here in this cable channel. Let's just kind of put it here and forget all about it. Maybe we can just actually 
take that down a bit. Now we have this in case we ever want to use that. Oh no, that's a lie. Ah, we need it. <laughs> this will be our Z and stuff. So this goes... Goes here. So the length will be... Somewhat like that. Totally forgot. So this needs the crimp. And then we need to figure out which side this goes on. Um, because one side of the plug is the ground, but we don't want to have the ground connection, of course. It's the same what we had last time with the other... with this one. So I'm fairly certain that's just this side as well. Let's quickly throw a connector on. That was a bit too close. Okay, and then we need a housing for that. Okay, so this goes here, and then quickly check the pin out. Is it left or is it right? It is on the right side, so it's the same as here. Oh. Oh, it's not a good crimp. It's like... It's like standing, standing out. That's, that's it again. We want pretty print, crimps. On. This is nicer. It's not the right crimping tool. Um, so it's not, not never perfect crimp with the JSTs, but it's close enough. Let's go to the right side. We said. And then we can plug it in. Cool. That's it. Oh. We can plug it in. <laughs> um, then there's one cable left, which is the LED. Um, this would need to go to a NeoPixel pin, which is this one here. And I assume uh, it needs to be the the power comes from somewhere else. Here's the thing. This was actually quite not so smart. Uh, this cable here is five volt, and we crimped it on the separate connector here, which is the TFT connector. Um, but we can also just crimp it here on the NeoPixel pin because it has the same five volt. Um, on the outside. So let's recrimp that as a DuPont, put it on the outside, and then the LED pin goes in the center, which is the control pin for, for the LEDs. Okay. So we need more crimping, and we need a three-pin housing. Cool. Let's see, so this kind of needs to be a tiny bit longer. Yeah, something like this. It's that long. I still regret like building this printer in, in, in so much black. Not a smart choice when you want to stream. Uh, 
time this goes in the center position. And then this one. Oh, that was not smart. So if we now put this here. Ay, ay, ay. It's almost too short. Okay, we can recrimp that, but then it will be like the absolute, absolute limit. Let's not screw this one up. And then we also need to shorten this one again, that's like nice. Just make sure that it fits first. Okay, so this plug goes here. And yeah, it's it's short, but it's doable. So then we should just like make it nice and pretty. So just to, oh, show you a bit more. It's like all black cables, it's a bit messy most like to, to observe. But this is not a 5 volt, and then this one is a bit too long, so we just shorten it to tat. First get it out. to go out. I don't think it wants to go out. It wants to stay. <laughs> Here we go. Let's just see that we kind of see it's like just like pat longer. And just cut this to somewhat the same length. And then we just Crimp another connector on it. And this goes here. It's a bit on the shorter side, but it's still good length. Cool. These are all the cables. You now, like this one, I have to resign this a bit because like the, the lip is really short. So it's like <laughs> doing this. Um, I kind of need to think of a way to kind of like anchor that a bit here. Like the idea was actually that this was a snap fit, but the, that didn't quite work out. Mm. Cool. Yeah, I really like this. I have to redesign this cable channel most likely. That doesn't quite work the way I expected it. Um, but it's not a big deal. Cool. That is all the wiring for um, uh, for the printhead, basically, right? Which is like most of the wiring. Uh, we still have to do the fan. There's like a random S cable there. And we still have to fix the fan mount, which I'd like it to do, we still have. Um, and I wonder how I can kind of like hold this down a bit. Because if you push down here, it's it's kind of fine. Yeah, I think I, I redesigned that. And I add like cable tie points along the line here. So that you can like kind of like tie it down here. And then this is fine. And if you have the lip with a like the, the, the lip longer, then it should work. Maybe I can have um 
that snap fits along along those lines. It's like snapping in. It's also nice. Cool. Yeah, and then this board is like sliding along a bit, but yeah, once everything's in place, it should be fine. And now let's say let's do the AC wiring, which is here the inlet. Uh, we have to route the cable kind of around here, and then there's a um, like through hole here. It needs to go through here. Um, and then basically we have to put it on the power supply. Um, so maybe let's let's mount the power supply first. Make sure I'm not pushing it off the table. <laughs> it would suck. So this is our power supply. Um, that's from the end of 3 Pro. Um, as you can see, I did some modifications. Uh, which you should not do. <laughs> Don't mess with your power supply, it's really dangerous. Uh, so that's like a do as I say, not do as I do situation. Um, that's, yeah, it's really dangerous. Like even now that this was not on for like a long time, if you touch some of the internals, like kind of can kill you. <laughs> Not um, keen on finding that out. A bit of a different bit. So my goal is now just like remove the wiring first, and um, then I would like mount this one, like the inlet, somewhere up there. And uh, then we need to check the wiring basically from the inlet um, from the inlet to the power supply, which we need to redo because this is obviously way too short. Um, let me quickly, well, we can just kind of like snap it off here, right? Because we won't reuse those cables anyways, so just want to make sure that late, later like wire it the correct way. You can kind of go somewhere. Um, and these are relatively easy later to figure out. But let's also do the same here. Let's just... Move it like this. Okay. So, um, the one problem I have is I actually do not have, like, a proper ground wire. By proper, I mean, like, the the color but i also see that here like they used um red and black which is technically not correct right it should be brown and blue um i mean i can sacrifice the cable i do have at the moment <laughs> and just put it out there let's see if we do that i mean let me low-key think about that a bit um yeah, let's mount the outlet first, I would say. Because we need to see, so this goes here. Um, this fits. I'm just not sure. Yeah, if I press it in, it's like in. I'm not sure if we need to get those screws out or not. Because those screws are... Oh! Okay, well... I said they, they, they look like they don't come out easily. <laughs> um, let's have the power plug on the, the, the thing on the bottom. Ah, nice! Fits, fits nice and snug. 
Um, but then that's actually leave it out for now. Um, then we do the wiring here and then we pull it in basically. I think that's easier that we can access it from here. Okay, so let's check those connectors. Yep. Sir. It doesn't want to come out. Yeah. I don't want to pull and then like uh, pull the connector off. Why is that not? Ooh. Yeah, this is really quick. Okay. Um, I actually bought those specifically for this. <laughs> Hi, Mike. Uh, yeah, Mike, that's also what I advise. Like, I would go straight for Switchwire. Like, if you start buying an Ender, I mean, it's fun, right? Like, I, I think this is more fun than building a Switchwire. Um, but, right, just from the logical perspective, it doesn't make too much sense. But it's also, like, I mean, it depends a bit on, on your needs, but for this money, I would also rather have a second V0. <laughs> it would be me. Yeah, okay, so the, the this one seems to be fit. So we need those blue, I think. Let's see, or is it... Are they actually different from the width? I have no clue about those connectors. No, they're the same. So we need to go... No, that doesn't make a good impression. <laughs> Straight pull this one off. Oh, but that's what I later put. Okay, that's fine. Um, cool, so we need to figure out which color we need for our cables. Um, I'm thinking whether I have like some AC cable that I can like sacrifice that I don't need. And not expensive to get again. Give me a minute. Success! <laughs> uh, I will have to get a new one then, uh, because this one is actually the one that was used for the screen film. Um, but they're not expensive, so it's fine. Um, yeah, I can't wait for my N3 Pro to finish printing to try them parts so I can start building it. Oh yeah, that's nice. Congratulations to your soon-to-be trident. Uh, I get a lot of local requests for parts and sometimes bulk items, so yeah, that's a good justification to have a, a trident. I think it's an excellent choice. Let's see, let's actually like keep in case I want to need this ever. Ooh. Okay, wait. Mm, ah, okay. Screw it. Let's do it like this. Works. There we go. And we have the wires we need. Let's actually do it on both sides. So maybe I can reuse them. And this gives us enough cable to do the internal wiring. Because basically we just need to run from here to the power supply. Um, if it's quite of a success, I might build a V0 for Prota. Well, here's my thing. Um, the V0, like, it's really cool. Because like most things I print, um are super small uh so the v0 can print most things and it's just hyper fast and but now it's just like super reliable so i know like if i send a print shot to the v0 it's done in like an hour 
<laughs> and just can go there and pick it up. It's really cool. Like, uh, it's a really, really nice printer. It's just like the bigger printers take longer to like preheat and everything. And for most things I do, it's enough. A bit more would be nice. Like, don't get me wrong. Like, if it would be like um, I don't know, 16 by 16 even, instead of like 12 by 12, that would already be like a massive improvement. Here's the thing. I'm, I'm, I'm wondering whether we should leave the sleeve on. Or whether we pull the cables out. Because technically, like, we now have the wires here. We can we can wire everything up, right? Um, I mean, it's a bit, like, stiffer to route internally. Let's, let's pull it off. Just need to figure out how to do that best. Um, I have a bit problem with my shoulder still. So I can't really pull on stuff. <laughs> Which right now is kind of needed. Can I? No, that's that's a bit too much. Let's just guess we have to do this step by step. Let me just. Show you a bit more. There's most likely a trick to like pull off the entire isolation in one go very easily. But I don't know that. Also very careful to not um, damage the isolation of the inner cables. Maybe I can... No, I damaged the cable. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> this is like one of the things I should just do before stream. Almost there. Let me try it again. I'm fairly certain this should. Oh no. <laughs> it's not. This also can't? Okay. Well, then knife and patience it is. Most likely already more than enough. Success. Um, yeah, exactly. Why I might want to be zero. <laughs> um, but from a trend 350, we'll do fine. Yeah, I think that if, if you have a 350 and you have a V0, it's exact opposites, right? So they, they will go very nicely together. Um, because one is like big and <laughs> you can like print a lot, but it takes like quite a lot of time for it to get ready, right? Uh, and then the V0 is uh, small and quick. Um, have an order in progress for like 80 of the same items. Yeah, okay, that is perfect and for Trident. Uh, got close, that's for both. Thanks, Mike, for dropping in. So, 
Let's see. But now this works. Here you go. Finally, something I can use this for. Um, let's just quickly test this because I actually I have zero clue about those connectors. Let's just see how this goes. This doesn't go well. Okay. If we can pull it off, then that's not really what I want to do, right? Let's quickly try that again. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's uh, even smaller ones, but they don't fit here. Well, it seems to be the right one. Mm -hmm. I think I need to also put it on the isolation. Side. One. Oh no, doesn't do anything on the isolation. Ah, but this one is not fine. Okay. Let's try one more time. So, this goes here. No, that's not. Ah, I didn't expect this to be like... Ah, now it's fine. Okay, we just need to check. Okay, so this one goes... See, here. Yeah, that's the center pin. Okay, this is one. Um, let's see, did I damage this on one side? Not really. Let's use this side. So let's just... Same here. I know that there's like some rule. There's a difference between brown and blue. I know that. Um, let's actually reuse those how things. Oh, like those, those covers. That's such a bit. Because like here they're now completely covered and, and with the new ones the ends are bare. Uh, but we can also use some heat shrink. Let's use some heat shrink. Uh, but let's do that. Um, so then I know there's a difference between the two, but let's just use blue for this one. And then we have to do one more. Also on this. Oh, it's another one that doesn't want to come off. Cool. And then we have our um, AC wiring. Let's put on heat shrink here. Have some over here. 
just to cover that up nice. This will be a little bit too tight. I don't have to use the white one. Let's just cut. I don't have scissors, but this will also do. Perfect. Let's just throw in some heat shrink. Um, a bit more of a close up. Could have made it a bit longer. Now that I look at it, I could have made it to cover like the entire thing, but I think it's fine. Let's just use those. It's not something that we will ever look at. So. Last one. Then I think the next step we should do is like install the power supply so we can see where the cables need to go actually. And Oh shit. Which one was it now? Top or bottom? I think it was top. Cool. I mean, this is just like worst case, the switch is in the wrong direction, but can't have it on. Then let's just leave the, the cable at full length for now. Let me quickly clean up a bit. A lot of threading. Let me just push all the... <laughs> Trash to the side for later to deal with. Um, I think we will need more of those connectors. Yes, they're also spade connectors. Let's just... Flip that over again. And... Yeah, you can see that. Perfect. So I'll just pull it through. And we said we want to have the switch on top. Let's do switch on top. Is this symmetric? Yeah, it should be symmetric. Try it other way. Oh, okay. So for some reason it only fits in one direction. Oop, ooh. I don't like that. This is uh, tighter than I imagined that. Um, I kind of don't want to have the AC wiring interfere too much 
with that. So the idea was to kind of route this over here. Um, I have to create some cable clips. Uh, and then maybe when I redesign, I mean, actually this fits in here. So maybe we can just really push it through here to the other side, like uh, basically like down there. I have it out of the way. Um, and then for here, there is this one printed part. Which we need to check how it goes on, but I think it's kind of somewhat like this. Um, and that has like a mounting hole in the back and this holds this entire thing in place. So I'm not super happy with this then here. So maybe it's good to have like a separate printed part to just like... Um, so we mount this, or like we push this in here. Right? Um, and basically have one printed part that like just separates the... Um, also with... But this one we cannot move. If we could not use those connectors, then we would have way more space here. Okay, let's do the following. Let's um, remove this section of the cable channel here. It's only one screw actually. Um, You just screw here and then we can push this it's also like something i need to change like the hole here aligns with this gap and this hole is here so oh no there's a screw <laughs> um hey who put the screw there i'm not sure if this I mean, it works. Okay, it's another thing to consider when redesigning this is like really we have a little bit of the pass through here. But now it's fine. Let's just mount that on top. I think it's like a really elegant way of routing those AC cables. Really wired, push it into here. I have to route it a bit out here on the side. Do it like this okay yeah and then basically if we just have some form of clip to clip this in here and i think this works and then we need to separate it somehow it will be like another custom part we need to make but it's fine right and then we have it like this But it's mainly this, maybe we replace this part here, or this cable, with one of the other ones. Um, so if we just snap off like a little bit of this cable, because this is like easier to bend than this. Yeah, I think we, let's do that. Let's... Let's do that. So we just need like a sh short loop. Okay. 
This might be too short. Yeah, that's too short. Mm. And also now I see that like the cooler use damages the cables a bit here. And it's okay. Not a fan of this one. Let's redo those because I don't want to have cuts here on my AC wiring. We have enough cables, so it should be fine. And for this one, let's just make a loop that is noticeably shorter. So let's do it like this. And let's use this one here. Let's do it manually. Hmm. <laughs> This is now shorter, like it's a bit shorter. Yeah. Let's create a loop first. And those connect. I mean, it's nice that you don't come off easily, but. Very excessive. Yeah, this is nicer, it's way shorter. How does that look? Oh, there is an orientation to that. Ha, I'm blind. It's like one flat side and one, well. Okay, is this no better? Nobody knows. So quite long, like I would want this to be really, really short here in this loop. Let's just oh well. Let's just do this again, I would say. Go for short. Um, no clue what just happened, but something was off with my internet. Now it seems good again.
Um, seems like everything is working. But let's not do this again. Yeah, now it's everything is back to normal. Weird. No clue what that was. Sorry for that. Okay, so we have our super short loop. Yeah, see, now, now we're getting somewhere. So this is exactly what we want. Then let's do the um, heat shrink. Let's just do it a bit longer this time. So I'm just checking that like we have enough heat shrink to cover the cool red thing that we... Let's actually like keep it the same length that we had before. So like this. More like functional, not, not pretty heat shrink. Oh. It's here. Other side as well. Okay, perfect. Then now we have station. So pull those cables back. Now we have a very short loop here. And um, so if I redesign this cable channel, and then we add some kind of separation here, physical. Like if you have something here like this, just to separate the AC and the DC wiring here, uh, then I think this is an okay setup. Just like it's really cramped here because of the two main boards. But yeah, we'll we'll figure out something like this. This should be fine. Um okay, and it's just like just like as a quick fix here, let's put this here. And then we have tons of cable here to connect them to the power supply. Let's just see how we mount the power supply. I'm gonna actually need to check that because I did not did not um, consider checking this before. Let's see. Mm. Oh, I didn't even open the file yet. Um, here we go. Yeah. Open. In the meantime, we can connect them out. I'm uh, excellently prepared. So, let's see. So, how do we mount that? So, we have those two on the side. We need to check where those parts are. And then there's this bracket here on, on this side. So three mounting points. Yeah, and then basically our cables right there, they're now up here, so they can come in here and then they connect to, to this. But they also have to cross over the DC wires here to go to this side. Yeah. That's all, it should, should be fine. Cool, okay. Um, let's quickly find the parts we need. And let me try to push this just a little bit further back so I have a little bit more 
space to work with. Um, there's not a lot of printed parts we have left. This, this, and we also still have this for the AC. Um, let me see if we need any heated inserts here. Because I don't think those two need heated inserts. And how this part works is a mystery for me. Oh, it reaches like anchors it in the V slot, okay. Okay. Let's maybe quickly put the heated in heated in insert in here. Only one. Should be quick. quick. But it's the PLA, so it's not too much fun. It's like the PLA is not very nice to heat inserts. Um, we'll take a second. I'm quite sure, like, if... heat inserts in ABS are really easy, and PLA is a bit um, annoying. Yeah. I have one done. Cool. <laughs> so, when that's prepared, then let's quickly check the power supply. So here we also need to figure out um, what we do. So this basically ends up here. Uh, now I have my mod with the fan, which obviously doesn't fit height-wise. But um, let's first pull off the fan. Again, please don't do that. You should not play around with power supplies, especially if you have no fucking clue like me. Um, let me see. How do we do it best? Let's remove the fan. I kind of like want to quickly document um, the orientation of the pin. Usually I would take a picture, but I don't have a phone right now. <laughs> um, so basically we just make a quick drawing of the connector, right? So this one is blue. This is purple. Um, and blue goes to ground and purple goes to purple. Now we can connect that. Cool. So, um, there's one screw, there's a second screw. What will we do with that? So I don't want to go back to the original Ender fan because it's just ultimately, ultimately noisy. But at the same time, this fan doesn't fit. And, um, oh, there's a super, super dust. Oh, let's just put this off for now. So this is, um, Something we need to change. And well prepared as I am. Man, this is so dusty. And it, it, it works, so that's good. But, so this is the fan that we have on here. 
I have this fan. It's the same uh, brand, family, everything. It's just thin. And it's 60 millimeters instead of 80. But this will be like plenty. Plenty. Um, so basically what I want to do is um, I want to redesign this one um, with the new fan. The problem is I have two printers. I have this printer, which is not really like printing at the moment. Oh, it's also dusty. Cool. Um, and I have a V0, which this is not a V0 part. So for now, <laughs> um, what we will do is uh, we just hack it. Uh, and at a later point in time, I will revisit that and, and print the proper part. So, cable ties it is. Um, now I just realized we could have also just left. The cables there on the board of the PSU, but hey. So this will be later replaced. And what we also need to do is actually we have to, to cut a hole into the bottom panel. Um, because I want this fan basically to access fresh air. Then we can think of whether this fan uh, on the other side will be like exhaust and kind of like create a like circle. I'm not sure if it's super important, but yeah, this is super dirty. I have something to clean this. I don't think so. Yeah, not pretty, like, but it's, it's temporary. Okay, so. Um, I wonder whether we should, because I mean, this one was kind of a hack shop, right? Like we used the DuPont connectors, um, but there's JST connectors. So let's just make like something nice here. Uh, I put it somewhere where I can't I cannot kill myself accidentally. Um, Okay, so and I can't repeat myself, but don't mess with power supplies. So we have here a nice connector. Um and We have cables. And I do have... No, I made a mess. On the old ender, I actually have the fan connector here. So... They're a little bit like used, I would say. Um, but let's make... How about we just use this exactly like it is? We don't need to okay. Because this one is the correct connector for here. Right? And then we just figure out how long this needs to be and then we crimp a JST plug on the other side. Now we have something nice. Just put this like through some random hole here. Maybe through the same, that would be nice. Let's just do something like this. It needs to be a little bit longer so we can like kind of like push it in. Just print connectors on here. Okay. 
Um, yeah, it's quickly crimp the connectors, then we need to figure out the polarity. And while I'm doing that, let me repeat, do not do that at home. Okay, this one is fine. Okay, then we said blue is ground. This connector goes on like this. Blue is ground and blue is on this side. Is correct yeah also be aware that like the pinout of those keys used from the end of three is not the same like they're different variations uh, mine uses 12 volt fans yours might use 24 volt fans Ooh. Wrong way, but it still is long enough. <laughs> Lucky me. <laughs> and this part is like super bent. Okay. Let's close it up. Um Okay. Um, oh, I remember this was too sh like, it's like again, like uh, this part didn't fit. Like, yeah, this one will need to be replaced. Like, I also want to cover it, or I wanted to cover like the, the, the entire like blocks here. Um, so I think what we do for now is like we will like connect everything and then I'll just put like uh, isolation tape over it just to protect it a bit and this will also hold this. And then once the print is operational, we will replace this ASAP. Okay, then for this one here, this goes here. Let me see what type of screws we have available here. I assume this is a M4. Yes, this is an M4. So just here, and then I need like another quick round of. Oh, <laughs> I need a quick round of cleaning up because the mess is real again. Okay. And then for those parts, they basically mount here, like this, and this. And then basically we 
put them on the on the V slot rail here. Ah, uh, no rail, V slot profile. So we need M four screws of a certain length, and I do not have a lot of M four screws. Let's see. Oh. Yeah, see? Oh, they're like just long enough. I think it should be fine. Maybe they're too short. <laughs> um, yeah, there's nothing behind, so it's fine. So there, the, these screws come from the ender. That's like some screw we recycled from somewhere. Potentially from power supply. Doesn't touch anything, yeah, that's fine. There's also space. Okay. And it has its its legs. This should now simply fit in here. Oh, this one is the wrong way. This needs to be this way up. Ah. Here we go. And basically we can put this in here and then they kind of need to be screwed on here and kind of like in place now uh, we still have the hammerhead nuts put this in here so if it's not so that wants to fly. Um, and we need to check because I got M5 screws, right? I recall that. Um, I have again those M5 by 15. They're way too long. Didn't I like... Air too short. <laughs> um, yeah, like the uh, rules in this um, are a little bit like a um, texture. I feel like I bought M5 by 12 screws or something, right? Like we needed screws and I bought specifically for this build. But if yes, <laughs> where? Yes, I ordered them from Amazon, I remember. Where did those end up? Check in here what we find. 
Did I use them all? No, I didn't use all of those uh, new M5 screws. Most likely some bag somewhere. Oh, we can always cut some, I guess. Ah, where could I uh, put those screws? Is there any box here? Oh, yes, main box. Oh, I completely forgot about this box. <laughs> That's the hardware kit, and there I put also the new stuff. M3 by 8. I didn't work on this build like for a week and I forgot everything. Oh, two weeks technically. Here, that's the screws I bought. And yes, I have a hardware kit. We're kind of done with hardware, but... Let's see... Please, that uh, should, should, should work. Those are the, yeah. Okay. One is in place, and then the second. Just as low as possible. Well, it fixes it in place, but the screw is slightly too long. <laughs> like the screw buttons out in the in the rail. Um, let me see. What we can do is we can use just maybe two washing. Oh. The washer? No, we don't have enough space for washer, but then we can maybe put the washer between just to give it a bit more space. Yeah, now it's better. So just put like maybe one washer is even enough. Get one out. Yeah, one washer is enough. And it's like not perfectly straight in there, but doesn't really matter. Um, let's try to get this in there. Oops. Loosen that again. This in. Okay, perfect. Yeah, and this is like, I mean, like, there's kind of like a bit of wasted space down here, to be honest. Maybe I, I redesigned this part here to just make, make use of this extra gap here, because I rather have more space up here than like tons of space down here. Let's see. If you get any problems with rounded cables, then this part will just be like, like, if you just stretch this part out, this entire power supply can move down. Cool, but yeah, this is firmly in place. Then I guess we can now do this. So I'll just have a little bit of like extra slack here. So this is basically as much up here in the corner as possible. Then we rot this down, right? So in the V2, this will be nicer here. Um, and then basically it would come out here, it's kind of close up here, and then let's do something like this. Um, 
I mean, technically, I still have enough cable to do the entire run again. So in case we have to, we can. Okay. Then we need some spade connectors. Where did I put this up? That looks like something we can use. So let's just move to isolation here. Let's do all three in one go. I'm not quite sure how much we need to remove the isolation, but we'll figure out in a second. Free up the spades. In. Yeah, it's not too much. Let's just cut off like a tip. Just create like a nice mess. Okay. So let's put this in. Good. One. Hmm. I think if I squeeze it too high up, it comes out. Because this one's fine, but I squeeze it like more down. Still figuring it out. <laughs> Another attempt. Squeeze it more in the front. Yeah, exactly. So it needs to be more in the front. And the last one. Then let's start here. So our red is brown, I guess. Our black is blue. You could have made the blue and the uh, earth wire <laughs> ever so slightly shorter. For perfect cable run, but you don't have to overdo it. Then protect the ground. Yeah, and then basically I would just have like some Yeah, I think it's quite a good ah, it's a tiny bit too long. And we can always just do this a little bit here. And then I can just have like one of those clamps. Mm -hmm. I don't have it. They're like those clips for the V-slot where you can like clip cables to, so I just would do that here and maybe even here. Just like 
hold this up and then we are free of all AC wiring. Uh oh. This is not good. Cool. Let's do that again. Yeah, let's actually take it off. The others look fine. Okay, well, I'll need this one. Good that I saw that. I'll, uh, after stream, recheck all the wiring again anyways. Like, also, like, the, the tool head wiring, everything. Mm. Because, like, when I do streams, like, it's really easy to miss stuff. Or to do something wrong. So, that's one thing I already noticed, like, my stupid mistake quote. <laughs> Your extremes is really high. Let's see. Second to cool. There we go. Push this on there. Maybe. There we go. Cool. Fixed. It would be nice here, like if we have something to pull this down here, uh, push this down. I'll come up with something. Cool. Okay, then as promised, give me... Plus this is how it looks here. <laughs> give me a second to just quickly sort everything back to scrum order. Fresh pile. Okay, this part we still have to install. Um, because this goes here, we said. There. I'm just not sure what kind of screw we need there. It's a bit long. A little bit shorter than this. Can't see anything there? <laughs> but there's a screw. No, you can't see anything. Okay. And that's still plenty long. Okay. Let's see if there's something shorter than that. Mm. 
This might be just long enough. Yep, here we go. Block your plates. Cool, then this is the AC wiring, uh, minus some extra leftover tasks. I'm just wondering like if we can get this from somewhere else. Like this is like a constant 24 volts. Which is used for the heater, so it just needs to be like something of a beefy power source. The problem is like it's not only used for the heater, it's also used for other 24 volt stuff. I mean, technically, we can just grab it directly from the terminal here. We need to see that uh, this will go somewhere else. I I'm, I'm certain now. I mean, the problem is, so basically here, here's how the wiring will look like now, right? So this is now the power supply. And we have, I think, three 24 volts and three ground here. Um... And one set of those will go, let me think, one set of those will go into the relay. I mean, here will be like a, here will be a thin rail. Maybe let's mount a thin rail. This one. So let's just tape that there. Let's just tape that there. Um, that's my favorite tape. It's horrible to to use. Oh, it's a bit too long. Let's just do maybe four of those strips in total. Now my favorite part, peeling off the, the backing liner. And not dying. <laughs> Why doing so? to get those off. Okay, two. I regret putting four on now.
Okay, three. One more to go. Oh, this one is easy. Oh, with those tweezers, it's really easy. Like with the other tweezers I used or tried, it's really hard. But that seems rather easy. Just roughly center it. Separate this. Like once it's on, it's on. Cool. So then stuff that goes on here. So we will have, as promised, one relay. Bit of insecure fit. One fall off, but and this one we have to still build. Um, this will this. Um, so these are two back converters. So basically, we will connect twenty four volt to the relay. Um, one of the buck converters will power the relay because what I discovered is when the relay switches, um, there's a drop in the voltage of the back converter. So we have one buck converter specifically for the relay. So we have one 24 line going to the relay and one 24 line going uh, basically to the central plug here of the two buck converters. And then this one will go to the input of both buck converters and then the output will go to one plug each. And then this one will go to the relay and the second one will go to the Raspberry. So, that being said, what we can do now is we have quite a lot of space, more or less, uh, here, I guess, for example. Uh, what we can do... Um, this is like the old mainboard assembly, basically. So first you see the exactly the same setup here. So we have two back converters and um, you see Oh, that was my headset, one second. Let me quickly set up everything again. Oh, and the disconnect the disconnect. It's was a shame that it doesn't tell me, like, hey, running out in five minutes. No, it's, like, gone. Let's see. Okay, here we go back on track cool um so you see the the yellow wiring base is five volt and one back converter provides power to this like block here and this powers the relay so doesn't really matter um but we have those five let me just quickly like All I need from here <laughs> are the Vago connectors. The rest I don't care. Um, wow, wow, what a mess. my Vago connectors. Oh god. Ah, oh, here we go. Okay. Mm. 
Now the question is, can we get those Vago connectors out of this block? Uh, so my idea is basically to um, go from the relay into uh, the Vago connector blocks. Uh, and then we can basically, because we need to power two mainboards, so we have input, 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 and then we have mainboard one, mainboard one, mainboard two, mainboard two, and then we can grab the ground and 24 volts, or the, the ground, not but 24 volts, we can directly grab from here for the tool head. Uh, that gives us space around the AC wiring. Another question is how do we get this out of there? Um, I mean, we can heat it up a bit. It's PLA after all. Got a lot of PLA. So let's do the other side as well. <laughs> While we're at it. And this uh, lighter needs some new gas. easy. Perfect. Our harvest. So, uh, we still need like some mount for them. Um, um, but then basically, I mean, we can also see where we position them, right? Like technically, because we need only two, we can also maybe put them here uh, and then have the cables we need. So uh, what I want to do is here, we have like a lot of space. So I kind of want to have like some loops or something where we can like route the cables through. Um, alternatively, we can also clamp something on the, on the uh, thin rail. So that's not quite clear, but like those are what we need. And then we only need one connection basically going down here and one connection going here. Um, and I think let's do the following. Uh, I'm not really in the mood of soldering this board today. This will be like next time, but maybe there's also the raspberry, right? Like the raspberry kind of goes here more or less. So let's do the raspberry. Um, and then let's prepare the cables and prepare the raspberry because then between the streams I can basically figure out how I can like do the cable management here. So let's quickly let's unbuild this, but not with this bit. This case is also quite horrible. Like every, I, I dropped it like a couple of times or like squeezed it a bit in a bag or something. It's like really fragile. So this would be, yeah, whatever. The end of this case was what I wanted to say. This will be the end of this case. Like it's just really fragile. 
any 3D printed case is, is better than this. I glued it in like 50,000 places. This SD card I will need for something else. Carefully remove the camera. Now this can all straight go to the trash. Perfect. One raspberry and some trash. Yeah, that's good. Move it to the trash pile. Um, we do have a mound for it. Which is the same as the others. Um, and then we do have spacers. So basically, spacers go here and just give like a little bit of like space. <laughs> what a raspberry. See? Just grab a bunch of M3 by 8. Sure, no. We need M2.5. Oh, that's M2. M2.5. I just three printing lab. Not sure if they really grab. The front one does. <laughs> the others don't really grab anything. No, see, I can really push this in. So this, I mean, there's nobody to blame but me because I designed that. The problem is I don't really get an M3 through through the raspberry. Do I? Because another raspberry holes are designed for M2.5. I mean, I would get it through, but... Uh, what a shame. Why does it not work? Try a longer... No. I wonder why the front one... Front one works. And maybe just try a 
I mean, it's also M3, but I know I used those before. Maybe there's some magic. And we can always just drill out the hole for M3. Because I'm pretty sure like I designed those for M3, which was like stupid. Yeah, like the M M2.5 just directly slides in. For some reason here, this hole is a little bit smaller than the others. Oh, this one also should work. So it's only the, the bolts on the back that are a problem. I'm not sure if they're... Let's see. I feel like I'm hacking my way through this build. It's 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 not even funny anymore. Okay, and let's just tighten the front ones. And we figured something out for the for the back ones. I mean, I can just print this part again and fix the, the whole diameter. I think I want to print this anyways again. Um, because it's red, <laughs> which is not the best color. I was running out of like black ABS. So... I used red. So we just use the screws in the back now to kind of like anchor it. <laughs> they don't do much. Okay, we have a raspberry. So this good boy goes here. Yeah, see this is like nice. This is a little bit like but this one also gets uh, gets a redesign. I wonder why this is so wobbly. Maybe because it's only one, and this one is two. Like that's most like the difference. This one has two clamps, and this one's only one. I mean, it's it's, it's holding. It's just like not nice. Cool. But yeah, this is basically our electronic setup. Um, then I would say let's do some cabling. I mean, we have some random bits. Of 24 gauge wire, but I don't think they're like long enough. Let's just use a fresh, fresh one. So, just... okay. So basically from here, how about we just crimp like the connectors, the spade connectors on there. And then we just run the cable to here. I mean, technically like the, we only need to run the 24 volt wire down here. The ground wire can directly go to the terminal. 
<clears throat> so I'm also not sure if we need the blue. I think we need the blue ones, yeah. I think we use the blue. Let's just make sure to also use blue. Just do, let's do the, the 24 volt first. All right, so this goes in here. Um, and then basically we run this somewhere here. I'm not sure. It's one the top one. So this is um, something like this. Now we put the same space connector on there. Say we just put them below here. I could have done it like maybe tad shorter, but I think after like we kind of have some cable management there, should be fine. It goes like this. Yeah, if we just have like some something here and here to like kind of like hold that, then and we can always like move this like one over. Because now I think it's even <laughs> maybe touch like it's per perfect length. I think yeah. Cool. Then we need one cable from here to down here, and this one will need a, a JST plug at the end. So let's just use those two terminals next to each other. Um, and then we use, I don't think we have any cable we can, we can recycle, so just use a fresh, fresh run. Um, I'm a bit concerned whether we can use those, oh sorry, like these are like super thin wires actually, um, oops, 20 gauge. I'm not sure if we can use them with the connectors. This is like <laughs> barely, barely. Um, let's just see if we what happens. Yeah, ah, uh, yeah, no, that's not. Um, but I also can't use like 14 gauge wire on a JST plug, right? So that's also a bit ridiculous. Um, and, 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 and what do we do then? I mean, we can use.
We can use a ferro connector. I mean, it also works. Not perfect, but... I think that's the best... The best we have. <laughs> Maybe we need to find a different wire. Maybe we need to find a different wire. <laughs> um, okay, that does not work. Um, let me think. I mean, we can, again, use bagels, right? That we have, like, a 14-gauge wire going into Vago, and then we use the... What is that? 24. Yeah, it's even 24. On the other side. I mean, we have some space here. We can put some bagels somewhere or somewhere here, right? On the side. So we run them down. Goes into the Vago. And then from the Vago it goes to the JST. I just need to have, have a mount here. Or like two. And then I think this works. But then I would not run the wire yet because then I would first want to place them and then we can run the wire. Same for the bagels up here. We kind of first need to place them. So we have not like one very lonely wire. Um yeah, this one this one needs a replacement. This one does not fly. That's not not acceptable for me. Um, but, I mean, it's like slowly like filling up, right? So it's, there's, there's progress. <laughs> I feel like I'm so slow with this build, it's incredible. But um, there is progress every time we work on it, so that's, that's good. It's going in the right direction, just very slowly. Um, okay, so... Basically, um, those wires also will first need the, the vagos here. Although I'm considering putting them here. They might get a little bit messy in this corner here, but should be fine. Um, and then maybe what we can do actually, like, I have to redesign this part here anyways, right? Because we need this pass through here to be nice. Technically, I'm not a big fan of like running the wires in parallel. No, but it's fine. I'm, I'm thinking about those 24 volt wires here. Those here, the blue ones here. Um, I mean, we can run them like in this V slot here and then they go through here. And then they are down here, and we can run them over here, and then have the Vego connectors there. And on the other side here, uh, we can use the same pass through we use for the AC wires, but on the other side to run them here, and then we can they can meet here. Um, so that's all all fine. So I just need to redesign those two parts to have this pass through here. That's one thing we want to change, but we also want to have cable type points here. In the middle so i can kind of like push this down a bit yeah hold that in place and then we want to have like um i mean those are kind of like a little bit like flexible to the outside anyways so i think this would be like perfect to just have like something clamping uh the panels in in place so we can like click them in place and they hold down the the stupid cables um yeah and also have, like this is the exact same thing like, i wonder why 
like the raspberry one is like super tight and this is like i mean this is also fine ah so yeah there's nothing we need to figure out let me just make a to-do list but otherwise we'll forget half the things we know it's got so we need the um cable tunnel needs a pass through for the ac wiring um we need uh cable tie points we need um snap it for covers we need um cable something down here to like route those cables it's a very small piece of paper up here then we need um mount for the wagos up here right we need the mount for the 2x wagos we need here because we need to run the uh, cable for the board down there we need what else do we need uh we want to have something to separate this here Man, it's such it's a lot of work. Um, although I think it's fine. Like if we don't have this black cable here, like if this cable is gone, because this will go down to the Vago, then I think it's fine. Then it's not touching it here. And unless we make use of those terminals here, it's fine, I think. We just need something to like clamp this here in place. Mm. Maybe we can just have like a very simple part that screws in here to the side and it's just like, like an L bracket basically holding this down. Because if we hold it down like all the way up here, like then it should be fine. And I think this is fine. Um, and then we need to check the the uh, thin rail mount because that's not not flying. Huh, but it's like like slowly, slowly coming together. As it will be like a busy week for me to prepare everything. Uh, potentially we will um, not continue the wiring next week because I have so many things to like like print and uh, get prepared. Uh, but we do like um, the extruders are still something we need to build, right? So maybe we do that next next week. One thing I quickly want to check out though. Mm. Because now it's the first time everything is kind of in place. So. One thing I was thinking about is, uh, and it's kind of like why the layout of the board is here, like this. We will have... two USB wires, of course. And I was always wondering, because that's what kind of like the intention I had. Kind of route them here, but now I already see that this will be like rather... Tight. I mean, this is like where this spot was kind of meant, like that's where the USB cables are supposed to go. And I wanted to use the blue ones that I had. But it's also like here we need a cable type point, like this needs to be like I mean, the routing itself is kind of okay, right? Like, we don't need those connectors here, <laughs> so it's kind of fine. Maybe it's even better if we... Hmm. 
Gucken hier. Yeah, like this. But then we need the cable tie point here in the center. So we just like exactly where I now have my thumb to hold them. Maybe we can kind of like overcross them a little bit like this. I mean, this works, right? A bit. I'm not sure if you can see that actually. <laughs> but then we kind of have something that, that works. Kind of like play around with it a bit. And then we just have enough space down here on the on the din rail. We should have like put this down a bit more because now we kind of waste a bit of din rail here. And again, like we have more space down here than actually needed. Um, but it also means we have tons of space here on this side for the 24 volt cables, to be honest. Like for the um for the Vega connectors, so we can just put them here. And then like the 24 volt cables can like go along this side basically down here. So if we have one cable type point here, because like they will not stay there, of course. Like if we have one cable type point here, we have the Warren logo, just like this. I think this is acceptable. Like you have a bit of overlap here. I was thinking to buy like perfect wires, you know, like with a 90 degree, uh, here with a 90 degree connector down there, but yeah, it's not really needed. Technically you could do that, right? Like if you have 90 degree this direction and then here I would actually do like a loop. This side is fine. Like from here to there, that's fine. Just this one is a bit meh. Man, I was looking like for like perfect USB cables on AliExpress for quite a time <laughs> to like for this exact spot. But figured in the end, like it's just not worth the effort. This works and yeah, saves a bit of money. It's not pretty, but Maybe even something I can think of, whether we like put them below, because at the moment I put them above, maybe it's better to route them below the cable channel, basically. Maybe that would be even nicer. Then the cable channel just like mounts over them and holds them in place. I think that's better. If I redesign the thing anyway, then let's redesign it properly. Oh yeah, and this this one I totally forgot. Um, the do list is getting longer and longer. <laughs> um, yeah. We need M two point fives here, uh, and then the cable channel. Cross below and not above. Oh God. Okay, this will be a busy week ahead. Ah, uh, but I guess then I would call the day now. Uh, tons of stuff to do. And then next week depends a bit how quick I am with making all of the adjustments. I think some parts I will just find on Thingiverse. Um, the cable tunnel should be relatively quick, I just have to print it again. Um, the cable rod thingy, like we can kind of like let that be for now, that's not too important, but I just need the Vago mount thingies, but there should be something on thingy words like that we can throw it together, uh, or like printables. Um, so the important thing then to continue, right, is the cable channel adjustments. The Vega mount, the Vega mount. Let me just mark them like the important ones. Um, yeah, the Raspberry we should quickly fix. Yeah, so the DIN rail being loose, we can figure that out later, I think. Because we always can actually just replace that in the end. Um, yeah, cool. Long to-do list, 
short week. Then I would say that's it for today. Um, sorry for for this being on Friday. Uh, like I'm I'm busy tomorrow, so I have to like, adjust a bit. Um, but yeah, I think like it's making making progress. I'm just curious to see if the wiring. Oh, I see another to do. Check, uh, double, triple check wiring. Um, double check the wiring that we did here. Uh, I don't like. It feels like I'm making so little progress every week. I mean, I'm also working now only like for three hours, so something also should be considered. But yeah, I feel like it's going quite slow. Um, yeah, but so progress is progress. Cool. Then see you next week. Enjoy your weekend. Bye.